Welcome to the Selling Your Screenplay YouTube channel. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger over at SellingYourScreenplay.com. One of the most common questions that I get from new writers is, how do I get an agent for my screenplay? I've covered this in a few spots in my blog, but I thought a nice short video would be helpful to show you how easy it is to build a database of agents. In some ways, I would say, if you have to ask this question, there's a good chance that you're actually not ready for an agent. Um, so, so bear that in mind. All the scripts that I've sold and options so optioned and, and all the writing assignments I've had, which as I record this video in September 2013, we're talking probably 25 options, five sales, and numerous writing assignments. None of them have come from the work of an agent or manager. I have had agents and managers while I have sold and optioned stuff, and in some cases, um, they've helped to negotiate the contract, but in every single case, the option and sale and, and writing assignment has come as a direct result of my own marketing efforts. So just bear that in mind. I currently don't have an agent and I really don't spend a lot of time looking for one. I have a good lawyer that I work with to help negotiate contracts and that's really all I need. I actually wrote a post on why you don't need an agent. So if you want to read some more of my thoughts on this, check out um, the blog post. I'll link to it in the show notes. So with that said, though, I am a big proponent of trying everything. So while I don't think you should pin all your hopes on finding an agent or a manager, I do think it's something that you should be spending some time trying to find along with trying to query producers and enter screenplay contests and all the other stuff that I've mentioned in my podcast and on my blog. Um, you should be doing everything, but certainly this is one piece of the puzzle, and I highly recommend that you do at least spend some time trying to get an agent, but don't feel like if you can't get an agent, you can't sell anything because you definitely can sell stuff. As, as I just said, all my stuff has been sold without an agent. Over the course of my career, I've had three agents and one manager. One of the agents I got through a personal contact, but the other two agents and the manager were a direct result of sending out cold query letters. So this demo is basically going to describe that process and show you how you can get email addresses and fax numbers for agents, and then you'll just send them a query letter. Before we begin, you're going to need a few things. Um, I would make sure you have at least two good screenplays, probably even three. Agents want writers who can consistently write good material so they can work a lot. Agents are really not interested in helping people sell one screenplay if that person is not interested in becoming a professional writer. If you think about this, this makes sense. I mean, agents want clients that are going to stick around for a long time so that they can build a good relationship with. You're going to need a really rock solid query letter, which is basically your pitch to agents. And that query letter is going to contain your logline. If you want some help writing your query letter and your logline, check out my free guide, How to Sell Your Screenplay in Five Weeks. Weeks one and two are all about writing your logline and query letter. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. I'll link to it in the show notes. Again, it's just a free guide. You put in your email address and I will send you these five lessons. And two of the five lessons are about how to write your query letter and how to write your log line. So you'll definitely need those before you start this. So now you have a couple of solid screenplays and a well-written query letter. Now it's time to start sending out, sending out the query letter to agents. It's really never been easier to track down email addresses and fax numbers for agents, so I'm just going to give you a quick demo about how you can go about doing that. Let's begin. Okay, so basically all I did to find the list of agents was just went to Google, typed in a search, WGA West list of agents. You do a search, a bunch of stuff comes up, the WGA.org slash agency. Just click on that. That takes you to this page. And this page basically lists all California agencies. And... What you can see is it has the agency, their address, and the phone number. If you're good at cold calling, and by that I mean if you have experience cold calling businesses in any sort of a sales environment, I would highly recommend that you just pick up the phone and cold call and try and actually get the name of somebody, maybe even talk to that somebody, tell them your query letter's coming, make a personal contact. I have... Um, had some cold calls done for me. I actually hired a sales lady once to do cold calls and it worked very, very well. It was expensive because it obviously is very labor intensive, but if you're good at cold calling, this is definitely your first line, line of attack is pick up the phone and dial these phone numbers. But 
in terms of just sending emails and faxes, it's generally not that hard to just track down the email addresses for these various companies. So let's just take this first one, above the line agency. I just went to Google again, did a search above the line agency. We get this page, a bunch of stuff comes up. Here we click on it, we go onto this page. I already did this so you can see, but basically you get here and they actually are nice enough to have this little submission form. So actually if you click on that, it takes you to submitting material. It explains how you submit the material to them. And in this case, and this is, I would say, fairly unusual, but there are a bunch of agencies that will accept material. So they have a submission process, a formal submission process, which is open to anybody. And this is great. It's easy to do. You just fill out their form and you submit and hopefully they'll get back to you. And basically what they're looking for is, you know, your name, educational background, pre previous literary experience. And here's a short description. And this is basically going to be your log line. So I would say this is probably the most important part of this form. Make sure your log line is just really, really solid and hopefully if all goes well they will then get back to you and request the script. So that's one above the line agency. So let's get rid of that. Let's go back now. Um, let's look at this one, Affinity Artist Agency. Let's do the same thing. You know I just did a Google search for them. Let's see if I can find this. So yeah, so I just did a Google search Affinity Artist Agency. Once again, it's easy to find their, their um, website and they actually have a spot for seeking representation. Now something's wrong with their website. I don't know if it's my browser or my computer, but I can't read any of this stuff. But that's fine. I, I still, we can track down their information. So in this case, they give some, some email addresses, you know, um, the info at affinityartist.com or candy at affinityartist.com. But the other thing that you might consider is just going to um, IMDB Pro, and it's the same thing. IMDB Pro is an absolute wealth of this type of information. So you can do a search for them in there. I'm actually already at the page just because I came here before just to look at this. But in any event, so here we find, we do a search for Affinity Artists Agency. It comes up. You want to click on this down here, Staff, and that shows you all the people. Now, if we go to their site, you can see that this Candy at Affinity Artists, she's actually listed here. So that's a good sign, Candy at Affinity Artists. You can also start to look at some of these other email addresses. So here's an info at Affinity Artists. Because in this particular case, the email address you have, Candy, that's a talent agency. So that would be something that you would submit to as an actor. Looking at the different people that work here, I would say this Eric C. Smith is the one. He's head of television and um, film. My guess is that's the person you would want to submit your screenplay to. And they actually have his email address addresses listed. But even if they don't, you could probably figure it out. I mean, it looks like in this case, Affinity Artists Agency, they use just the first name and then the website. So you have the website already, already down. You can see a couple of these others and you can see in this case it's Candy. So it's just a matter of tracking down the, the right person. They also have fax numbers here. So faxes can be effective. Again, this is just information. Pull this off. I would go um, with Eric, head of television film division, and, and submit to this email address. So let's go back and do one that's a little harder. Um, agency for the Performing Arts. And this is a, a well-regarded you know, agency. Um, probably going to be a little more difficult to actually get a cold query letter in there. So I could do the same thing. I, I looked up their website, and I could find nothing. It was the same thing. I just did a Google search for um, Agency of the Performing Arts and, and, and got here. Let's see if it's still up. Yeah, so Agency for the Performing Arts, I did a Google search, and boom, here it takes me to this page. I could not find anything that really told people how to submit, and that's probably pretty normal for a lot of these agencies. They don't want submissions sent to them just because they would be overwhelmed, so there's no formal process to go through. They just have their website, but that's fine because we can track down this information. So it's the same thing. Um, go to IMDB Pro, you're going to do a search for the Agency of the Performing Arts. It's going to bring you here, Agency for the Performing Arts, APA. Same thing, you just click on Staff. And what you're going to find with these big agencies here is their um, 
some some of them have email addresses listed, but again, when it says talent agent, that typically means that they're um, they they represent actors, not not writers. You want to look for something that's like literary assistant, something more like that. Just the word literary, something like that indicates that they actually deal with screenwriters and and writers. So Steve Fisher would probably be a good one for this agency to submit, but unfortunately he doesn't list his. He does list a fax number, but it's basically the same fax number for everybody at the company. But he doesn't list an email address, but that's not really that big of a deal because we are seeing some email addresses for these other people. And it looks like in this case, Agency for the Performing Arts, their syntax is M. Borgo. So it's the first letter and then it's the first initial and then the last name. So you could probably surmise that Steve Fisher is going to be S. Fisher at APAagency.com. And that's probably the person that we would do, um, that we would send to. To take this a step, even a step further, you can go to Google and you want to put in quotes, but let's see what I did. Oh, this is a, um, this is the next one. So, so you can basically apply this to, um, you can apply the same exact thing to um, producers as well. And I actually just completed a one location thriller screenplay. And I think it's kind of similar to this one, this movie that came out in 2010, which was a pretty big hit. It was a modest budget, but it did some good business um, and kind of has a little bit of a cult following. So in Hollywood, it's regarded as kind of an interesting movie. And, and this writer has certainly um, launched his career with it. It's a movie called Buried. So again, you can use this same strategy I'm using for for um, producers and tracking down production companies, or um, tracking down specific agents f f to who represent writers who have written similar stuff to you. So again, I think Buried is very similar to a script that I just finished. So I wanted to find out who is the agent that represented the writer. In this case, we go, we do a search for Buried. This comes up. We look for the writer. We go to Chris Sparling. That's the name of the writer. So here we have his credits, all of his information. And lo and behold, up here we have talent agent. We go and click on that. And here is his different um, agent representation. So he has an agent, and he has a manager, and he has a lawyer. That's very common for, for writers in this day and age to have all three. But in this case, let's talk about the manager. So we'll click over to the um, to his management company. Again, this is it, Kaplan Perone. That's fine. We click on the staff. And for the most part, they don't have any email addresses, no fax numbers. And as you can see, the email addresses they do have are kind of a hodgepodge. Here, Aaron Kaplan has an AT&T.net one. Here, this guy, um, Sean Perone, has an, a Hotmail account. So it's going to be difficult to guess. In some cases, you're going to come to a production company, and it's going to be difficult to guess what the syntax of their emails are. But they do list their website, so that's a good sign. So what I did was I just went to Google.com and I typed in at KaplanPerone.com. That's their website, and the at sign would indicate email. You want to put it in quotes, otherwise Google will think it's an actual URL, and they will send you to KaplanPerone.com. So I put the at sign, because basically what I'm looking for is an email address. And then I did a search. And what I found here is is basically giving me the syntax of their email addresses. So in one case, we have somebody here that has a Kaplan Perone. As I said, in some cases, you're going to find a company, they do not have um, any email addresses with their URL. But that doesn't mean that those email addresses don't exist and don't work. Here, we've got the last name, Matt Eisman, just Eisman at Kaplan Perone. So it seems like the syntax is their last name plus the domain plus the domain, but we don't know for sure. So, And again, sometimes you'll find companies that don't list even one email address. But if we go here, we start to get a little bit of a better picture. So here's someone, learner at kaplanperone.com. So then we go back here. Is there a learner here? Yeah, Alex Lerner. Okay, great. So it looks to me like Kaplan Perone, the syntax of theirs is the last name, the at sign, and then their domain name. And my guess is all of these people on this list have a working email address that would use that same syntax. So then it's just a matter of figuring out which person you want to email. So that's pretty much it. Um, as I said earlier, you can use this same strategy for tracking down production companies. Find a movie that's similar to your movie and dig, drill down in IMDb Pro to the producers. And most of the time, the producers will actually have a... Um, let's try that while we're here. So it's the same thing. We have Buried. We'll do a search for Buried 2010. That's the movie that I just did. So let's see if we can do this real quick. Production companies. 
for Seuss Entertainment, staff. Okay, in this case, they actually list email addresses. But it's the same thing. I mean, these producers produced a movie that I think is somewhat similar to the, to the script that I've written. And so here, lo and behold, we now have their email addresses. And I could send them a query letter say, hey, I have a one-location thriller. I thought you guys might be interested in, in reading it. And they might. You just never know. Again, you're going to need to do this more than just a couple of times. But this is a good way. IMDb Pro is just a wealth of information. And this is a good way to start building your database. So as you can see, this is pretty easy. It does take some time, but it does work if you do it enough. Sending out a few dozen emails like this probably isn't going to do much. It's going to take hundreds, if not thousands. So just keep rinsing and repeating and just keep building your database with more and more contacts. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please let me know. If you end up trying this and you actually get some good results from it, um, just, just drop me an email. I'd love to hear how it works for you. Thank you and um, see you later.